So the whole idea of Hamadi modeling is actually very simple. You can see it in the, in the flow chart here to the right. It's basically you, you take a sequence, you search for homologs using any of the search methods we've already gone through in this course. And uh, if you have a hit, you make some alignment, you can use a multi six alignment, whatever, you try the best, best possible alignment. And then you model it. And you, often you start modeling the core region, the things that are aligned, basically, and you skip the rest. And then uh, you maybe there are cases you might want to do realign because actually you have more information now than you had before. So you don't want to have big gaps. You might align the two residues that are very far from each other in the structure that have very short gap in some, for instance. So once you model the core region, you want to model the loops and then you want to model the side chains and then you want to somehow refine the model and then you want to check the quality. Some of these steps, some methods actually do all of this in once, so from the alignment on. Some methods can use not only one alignment but several alignments, etc. But the whole idea is anyway that you start with an alignment to one of several templates and then you use that model. And often at the end you do some kind of refinement and some type of uh, quality check. It's the whole that's common for most modeling programs. So detect template, get alignment, build the backbone core and the side chains, maybe build the lobes, refine the model, evaluate, and iterate a few times. And it's very important to see that basically once you have a wrong alignment and you put it into your modeling program, there is no way basically we can model, we can fix that. So you really have to be try to get alignment as good as possible when you start. This is the key concept. So I repeat this. Basically there's no modeling method that can correct the incorrect alignment. So if you get the wrong input, you're gonna get the wrong output. So there are some things here you can think about the thing, but this is an example where we have a loop, you see that the alignment and this yellow residue has been duplicated, so that's a target sequence. But if you would, um, you can, from alignment, you can choose to align the other one yellow to the first or to the second one of these two alignments. They will be identical. So you have to pick one randomly. However, once you have the structure, you clearly do not want to make the model as it looks here, where you have this yellow, the first yellow residue bulging out. So you don't want to create this model here that is shown at the right, where it is first just is bulging out. Instead, you would like to shift the alignment one step. So you have you aligned the brown residue, well, the yellow alignment, the second uh, yellow second residue. So they, so they have the brown residue as is higher than the first one, and you make the loop one step longer. So that would be much better. So that you have the structure information that you can use for making alignment better in case you are not, um, uh, you have, ambiguous choices, for instance. On the other hand, often when you do multiple sequence alignment, you have much more information of that it represents this, this structure anyway. Another example here is basically, you can see here you have two different alignments. So in, you want to align the red, when it's the same sequences, you have the red and blue alignments that are both aligned to green one. So basically they are, you have a three pro line that you might want to align to a, a leucine pro line glycine alanine. And of course, the sequence based, you get a score of aligning the program to the proline, like a red alignment. On the other hand, you see that that would mean that you would need to close the law that is very long between each other. So that would be difficult. You have to basically force all the things. On the other hand, if you do the second alignment here, you have a much shorter loop to close, so it's easier to close that. Another important factor to improve alignment is actually that you should use template quality so you choose the best possible template. So if you have, for instance, one, two top templates to choose with, and there are m one is slightly higher in sequence density, but much worse resolution, pick the one that is higher resolution. Because that can take much more detailed information. So even if there are slight more variation from it, you will end up with better. Of course, you should look the cores are conserved. So there are, here is an example, but the, the fact they're not conserved, you can ignore. 